You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Good day, and welcome to episode 181 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey folks, it's Sean back at you here with another episode. This time we're going to be talking about emotions and various other things. But first, I'm going to start with a joke. A dirty joke, perhaps? Okay, so it's episode 181, or in university we used to call it 181, which is the metric form of 69. Ha ha ha, very funny, get it? And speaking of dirty jokes, I've got one here for you that's... uh, I don't know if it's funny or not, but I've always enjoyed it and I've always remembered it. Uh, Question is, how many flies does it take to screw in a light bulb? The answer is two, but nobody knows how they got in there. (laughs) Why am I starting off the podcast with some jokes? Because it's my show and I can do what I want. Also, because I'm trying to make you laugh or at least smile, because those are components of emotion. So before we get into the whole breakdown of emotions, I was uh, just going through my list of things that I wanted to talk about, and uh, there's a few different topics that I thought I could get into, but I'm just going to combine everything, throw it all into one big smorgasbord of stuff, and I wanted to eventually do an episode about irony, you know, when you have moments in your life that are pretty ironic, and as I was going through a review of my life, uh, there there was a couple here, but not enough for an entire episode. So just one thing that's uh, kind of ironic and amusing is back in 90 or 91, that's 1991, a TV show, a variety show called In Living Color premiered. And I watched the premiere episode of In Living Color, but I watched it on a black and white television. Now, if that's not irony, I don't know what is. Is that enough to make an entire episode out of? No, it It's a 20-second story, so I'm just uh, going to move on here. What are emotions? Well, according to the book Discovering Psychology by Don Hockenberry and Sandra Hockenberry, an emotion is a complex psychological state that involves three distinct components. We've got a subjective experience, a physiological response, and a behavioral or expressive response. And we've got a couple other people here who have tried to define the emotions of humanity. And in 1972, psychologist Paul Ekman suggested there are six basic emotions universal throughout human cultures. That's fear, disgust, anger, surprise, happiness, and sadness. And then during the 1980s, somebody named Robert Pluchik introduced another emotion classification system known as the Wheel of Emotions. That sounds like a game show. Wheel of Emotions. I know I feel that way sometimes, and I bet you guys do too. Uh, But this model demonstrated how different emotions can be combined or mixed together, much the way an artist mixes primary colors to create other colors. So basically, uh, the lines between emotions blur. Uh, And then the original guy who did the six in 1972, In 1999, he expanded his list to include a number of other basic emotions, which included embarrassment, excitement, contempt, shame, pride, satisfaction, and amusement. The the other guy from the 80s, uh, he proposed eight primary emotional dimensions, happiness versus sadness, anger versus fear, trust versus disgust, and surprise versus anticipation then these can be combined to create others, such as happiness plus anticipation equals excitement. So there's a whole page about this, and I'm going to link this article into the show notes because I I don't want to bore you with all the details. You can just come and read it all yourself. But those are the basic emotions. We all have them. We all experience them. 
I'm going to tell you about some emotions that I felt this week at work. But first, I'm going to play a promo for another podcast right here on the ESO Network. Transmission commencing. This is Wookie Radio. Translated for the Wookie Affair. I like that Wookie. Your hosts, Ken, Derek, and Mike, bring you the latest news and commentary from the far reaches of the galaxy. Uh, hold it. Hold it. I said hold it. Subscribe today on iTunes and Stitcher. I just assumed it's a Wookiee. Start listening today, and remember, the Force will be with you, always. And there you go, that's a promo for another podcast. Hope you're checking them all out, because they're great, I'm sure they're fantastic. I know I haven't listened to any of them, but uh, that's beside the point. Anyway, uh, before we talk about this week at work, I've got a bit of feedback, which makes me happy and excited at the same time. These are some emotions that are elicited from uh, listener feedback, because I like when we can uh, have like a dialogue back and forth with each other, because normally it's just me sitting behind the computer desk talking into a microphone and hoping you guys are enjoying what I'm talking about, and if not, I would hope that you would send me an email to soulforgepodcast at gmail.com, much like our good friend Dan did. Hello, I'm Daniel Peter Hitch, author of the Bubbles the Pirate children's book series and the Connected Worlds Chronicles. You're listening to the Soul Forge podcast. Keep forging your soul. You all know Dan from the Temporal Trek podcast, as well as one of my co-hosts on the Cosmic Pizza podcast. So he sent me some feedback about last week's episode, which is pretty fantastic. Oh, and also with last week's episode, uh, the sound quality was not the best. I edited it as best as I could, but for whatever reason, uh, it just it didn't sound up to my usual standards. There was a bit of a hiss in the background. We recorded it in the living room, and maybe we weren't close enough to the microphone. I'm not sure what happened. I uh, hope you enjoyed last week's episode, though. Uh, so anyway, without further ado... Here's Dan's feedback about last week's episode, Over My Dead Body, and he calls his email Side Order of Death. Hey, Sean and fellow Forgians, just an email to say how much I enjoyed, and in brackets he puts morbid, I know, the Over My Dead Body episode, partly because death rituals slash burial arrangements are something I've thought about a lot. It's the one party we all have to attend, but have no obligation to enjoy or remember. Also, because it brought me back to an anthropology module I took at university that looked at societies around the world, their spirits and their cults, which also included death rites. As a Trekkie, I share your love of Rathacon-style torpedo tube send-off with bagpipes, and in all seriousness, I'd love to have my slash intact remains blasted off into deep space, perhaps to be found by some alien civilization in thousands of years. But in all likelihood, a space odyssey notwithstanding, I was taken by a different Trek send-off from TNG, the episode The Next Phase. Data holds an upbeat party to celebrate the apparent loss of his friend Jordy. Spoilers, he's really alive. It has music playing, people having fun, sharing stories. That's the send-off I want. People playing my favorite board games. A swing band, punk rock band playing my favorite upbeat music. Stand-up comedians telling death jokes. The poorer in taste, the better. I'll plan on pre-recording a message to say goodbye and gain the last word. After all, whenever am I going to win the last word in life? As for burial, I'm an atheist, and whilst the thought of decomposing is off-putting, I know that nothing of me will be around to feel it. So two choices. I'm taken with the mushroom wrap suit. If I die of boring old age, surrounded by loved ones with nothing interesting to say for it, all content, then I might as well let the stuff of me feed into more life elsewhere. And second, if I die of something a little exotic, from a disease perhaps, something that could be studied, I donate my body to science so a potential cure or paper might be published. Because fuck it, it's the only way I'll ever get properly published. Sorry for the long email. Live long. No, really. And prosper the hell out of life. Dan Hitch. So that's fantastic. I love getting feedback, emails, any kind of communication from you guys out there in podcast land. It's it's certainly appreciated. It's uh, it, it's a it's a feeling of satisfaction, I guess you could say. Speaking of that, um, this week at work, I was not satisfied. And why is that? You might ask. Uh, because whoever runs the post office has obviously never been an actual mailman before because they've just come out with all kinds of rules over the last year or two. And this week, 
it all took its toll on me and I was irrational and I was angry and I felt powerless to do anything about these situations that I find myself in. I've even considered taking a stress leave and I've never done that before. So the, the, the worst part of it all is I know I'm being irrational and I'm powerless to rein my emotions in. It's, uh, it's just a bunch of stuff. So what happened this week at work, Monday, I had to wait a half an hour for my first bag. Because what happens is we, we sort the mail into our case, into the houses that we're going to be delivering to later that day. And then we put all that mail in bags so that it can be sent out with a truck to various drops around town so we can pick it up as we go because we can't carry all the mail that we're going to be delivering in one day in one day in our bags so we pick up five or six times because you got your parcels and your flyers and all the different things that you have to carry so normally the bags are there before we get to our drops but on this particular day somebody was asleep at the switch I don't know what happened but I had to wait a half an hour in the snow cold and I, and I was just pissed off it, it made me angry for the entire day not to mention earlier that day, the supervisor told us that as of this week, we were going to have to wear masks inside our building while we were sorting. Now, I don't have any trouble wearing a mask when I go shopping, when I do my business downtown, whatever. It's fine. And if Canada Post would have introduced the mask mandate at the beginning of the pandemic nine months ago, I would have been f perfectly fine with it. But to uh, all of a sudden make these things mandatory nine months into a pandemic. It, I thought was ridiculous and I was not happy about it. So I was just a, a grumpy bear all week at work, just feeling totally irrational because last year they decided we have to wear safety vests when we're out delivering around town. Even though our bags come with reflective stripes, now we have to wear vests. We have to wear vests in the building. It's, I find it stupid. It's ridiculous. We've been doing it for decades without it and there's been no trouble. So, okay, fine. I'll, I'll wear your frickin' vests because whatever. But then, a couple months ago, or maybe a few weeks ago, I don't even remember when, they decided to take our iPods or music devices away from us because most of us, while we're out there delivering, it's just us with our thoughts and we listen to music or podcasts or whatever. And so they decided, oh no, nope, you're not doing that anymore. No more podcasts or music for you guys. That's it. We're done. Can't listen to them with headphones. Can't listen to them just in your pocket. Can't listen to anything at all at any time unless you're driving a truck and then you can listen to the radio. So, okay, fine. And then this week the whole mask thing, which is nine months too late. So, irrational, angry. What did I do? Uh, something that I'm not proud of, and I knew it was going to cause quite a reaction. I, I took the disposable mask, I took a Sharpie, I wrote on it, this is retarded, and wore it around the building uh, because I was displaying my anger, there's an emotion for you, my anger and frustration at these stupid rules that just get implemented willy-nilly. So I almost got called up to the uh, the office to have a talking to, but luckily the, the other supervisor, who's uh, a friend of mine, uh, intervened and just made me wear the regular mask. So there was there was no crisis, there was no getting a new job. But I did ask her later on about going on a stress leave, uh, because uh, you know what, Th this whole pandemic. Uh, people got to have free money, they got to have time off, and I know it, there's other things involved with it that, that weren't necessarily good for their pocketbook and whatever, but I've had to work straight through, except for my weeks of holidays that I get, so I didn't get any free money, I had to do all the working, I didn't, I didn't, it's the worst pandemic ever, like, where are the zombies? I, I'd like to go kill some uh, infected creatures who are undead, you know, like, let, let's have some fun with a pandemic, but no, no, there's, there's no fun, there's, there's no binge watching TV, because I'm at work all the time, so I, I think it's just taken its toll on me, and normally, as you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty even keeled, uh, I, I have my moments, of course, but, uh, you know what? Oh, I, I don't know. I even talked to my buddy Renee about uh, working with him at a different company because I, I've been at the post office. It'll be 14 years next April. It's a long time, and uh, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of it. It's, uh, it's just, it's enough. So let's talk about some fun emotions because this week was not completely horrible because episode 7 of season 3 of Star Trek Discovery Black Alert Black Alert 
came out on Thursday, and anticipation all week long. I'm always looking forward to a new episode of Star Trek. It's it's my first love. It it makes me happy. I love watching it. And this particular week, uh, episode seven was called. I mm, why don't I remember what it's called? I guess it doesn't matter what it's called. But oh yeah, Unification Three. That's what it's called. And it's a, a sequel of sorts to a 1991 episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. We got to see some, not really a flashback, more of a holographic recording of Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock, uh, from that two-parter of The Next Generation. And they were talking about how his dreams for unifying the two different people, the Vulcans and the Romulans, had finally taken effect after centuries of trying. Because... Many of you might not know Star Trek like I do, but Spock was the original character from... He, he, he ties all the Star Trek together. He was in the original series. He was in the original series pilot that didn't get picked up. He was in the, uh, the, the, the first six movies. He, he was in a couple episodes of Next Generation. He was in the reboot movies from the Kelvin universe from J.J. Abrams. So he's pretty much tied all of Star Trek together. He, he plays a, a half-human, half-Vulcan, and... Vulcans don't have them. Well, they ha they have emotions, but they don't display them. And I think for most of my life, I was very Vulcan-like. I didn't always display my emotions. So Leonard Nimoy's Spock has always been a big influence on me. And they sh they showed him. They showed actual Leonard Nimoy. They they didn't get uh, the new guy who's playing Spock uh, to age up the makeup and, and do anything. They actually showed the, the footage from almost 30 years ago, and it was amazing, you guys. It, it just it hit me right in the feels. Uh, they also named one of the ships in the episode after Anton Yelchin. They called it the USS Yelchin, and he played Pavel Chekhov in the reboot movies, and he died in 2016 of a freak car accident, so they attributed it to him. Uh, last year, Aaron Eisenberg, who played the character Nog on Deep Space Nine, he died last year, and a few episodes ago, they named a ship, af they named a ship after him in an episode. Uh, and in this week's episode, we got to see uh, her hear about the Yelchin, we got to see a recording of Spock, and they even mentioned uh, Admiral Jean-Luc Picard, and it was just, it was tying everything in, and it was just very emotional. I can't even explain it to you so that it makes sense. If... If you have a fandom that you're you're in love with, you, you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. It's just 55 years of, of Star Trek all coming together in this one episode to make it like a an amazing thing. So I don't know. It's just it's just awesome, and nothing makes me feel emotions like this Star Trek, like like a television show. Like what the hell is wrong with me? Uh, the the only other thing I can think of that I, I feel such emotions with is well interactions with my son of course but also these feelings that I have for my girlfriend Julie I, I know I've talked about her before she was my co-host on last week's episode uh, but you guys she's fantastic I've never met anybody like her in all of my life and and she makes me feel things that I never thought possible like I thought I knew what happiness was but I don't think I did not like this and there's nothing that I can point to specifically that, that makes her so unique like this. Like, I've, I've loved people before, but, and I guess the best way to describe it is I was talking to somebody at work the other day, and they were asking what makes her different, and I, I said, well, she's the only one I've never had anything to complain about, because in previous relationships, there was always something missing. Uh, for example, if, if this person was 10% prettier that would be amazing. If she was 15% more intelligent, that would be awesome. If she was just good with money, if she just had a driver's license, if only this, if only that. And there's nothing like that with Julie. Everything just fits so perfectly. Like, she understands who I am as a person. She doesn't try to change me like a lot of people have. If I had to stretch and say there's something that uh, I would change about her, it would be to make her more geeky because she's totally not. She's all into the shows on TLC, like My Big Fat Fabulous Life and 90 Day Fiancé and other things like Love Island and stuff. And she likes uh, true crime kind of TV shows. And I'm all about action and adventure and, and sci-fi and, and that kind of stuff. But really, what happens is I end up watching things that I never would have watched before, and I enjoy them. And 
enjoyment is an emotion, right? And we're just spending time together, and it I, it, it feels complete. She feels like home to me. I I, I don't know. She's uh, she's just fantastic, and if if you've gotten to meet her, then you completely understand. Uh, you've heard her on the podcasts, some of them. She's been on four or five episodes. She's she's pretty shy on there. She hasn't been doing this for seven years like I have, so it's it's to be understood that uh, she's not quite as comfortable, and, and comfort is an emotion as well, which she doesn't have, but she'll get there if we keep doing podcasts together at random. I, I just wanted to touch on a few emotional things this week, things that uh, have been happening to my life, things that are just out there in general. And to end the podcast, I want to tell you something. Now, this episode is going to come out the morning of December 3rd, 2020. That's a Thursday. Uh, so if, you've, if you're listening to this episode right now, before 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, you have a chance to check me out on the Indie Pods StreamYard streaming thing because there's a girl from the Psychedelic Podcast who reached out. She's trying to get this whole group together. Uh, it's The group is called Indie Pods United, independent podcasts helping each other out. And a bunch of us are doing half hour time slots. So I'm going to be live on location here in my house streaming myself talking about things. And I'm pretty friggin' nervous about it because, well, I'm going to be talking to people that I don't know. I won't be able to see them, but they'll be able to see me. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not the best at that because uh, I'm talking to a microphone right now, but you can't see me. And in fact, you're not listening as I'm talking because you'll be hearing this later, days later, because this, this is actually Sunday, the 29th of November as I'm recording this. I'm just going to read you this email and hopefully you check me out. I'm going to try to record it and make that a future episode of SoulForge. But anyway, uh, hello everyone. Indie Pods United is just days away. For all the podcasters, entertainers, and fans who are going to be part of the event, we cannot thank you enough for taking some time this holiday season for joining us with 2020's Best Podcasting Conference. For show and panel times, please refer to the schedule at IndiePodsUnited.com. And it goes on from there. And there's links. And um, I guess that's for me. Anyway, go to Indie Pods United. Check it out. You can watch me be nervous talking about podcasting and things and I'm sure that'll be quite exciting I'm sure you're going to love it and if not well I don't know what to tell you so I'm going to try to record it see if there's any way I can do that I'm not sure if I can but I'm going to try and then you guys will hear it anyway even if you don't get to see me other than that I don't really know too much else to talk about Um, just a just a quick discussion about emotions some emotional things that have happened to me in the last little while so what I would hope for is that you all take care of each other, you all be safe out there in podcast land. If you haven't joined the Facebook page, please do so. It's just under Soulforge Podcast. I share a lot of memes and whatnot. Uh, Go to soulforgepodcast.com for all the social media links and all the archived episodes and and all kinds of different things like that. Uh, But I hope you take care, and until next time, remember, love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links, and don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge Podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.